Minister Louis Farrakhan. Brothers and sisters in the radio audience, we want, welcome you once again to our weekly broadcast. We would like to say before we hear from Brother Farrakhan this afternoon, I know that many of you heard the broadcast last week. The tape from that broadcast is available. At the end of the broadcast, I will give you the number once again. But if you want the tapes for the last three weeks on the Respect for Life series dealing with the Christmas subject by Minister Louis Farrakhan, you can call right now, 994-5775. Minister Louis Farrakhan's ministry, Rebuilding the Nation of Islam, needs your support. We would like you to show your support for the work that Brother Farrakhan is doing in rebuilding the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad by mailing in your donations to the Final Call Administration Building, 734 West 79th Street, Chicago, Illinois. That's the Final Call Administration Building, 734 West 79th Street, Chicago, 60620. And brothers and sisters, before Brother Farrakhan comes on, take a minute now and call someone. Tell them that Minister Louis Farrakhan is about to come on on radio station WBEE 1570 on your AM dial. Don't Wait, do it right now. Call someone. Tell them, listen to Minister Louis Farrakhan. Without further ado, let's bring on Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. And in the name of his true servant and last messenger, our beloved leader, teacher, and guide, the messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, in our radio listening audience, and those who are in the 18 cities listening today by telephone hookup, and of course, those of you who are here at the Final Call Administration Building with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. As alaykum. Brothers and sisters, once again, it is my great privilege and pleasure to have this opportunity to share with you some of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, teachings that were given to him by Almighty God Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to remove from black people in particular the veil of ignorance, to remove from us the shackles of fear that we may stand up in our time and change the conditions under which we live. Brothers and sisters, for the last 100 years or more, up from slavery. White people have allowed us to worship Almighty God in the way that they taught us to worship. As you know, those slave masters of our fathers call themselves Christians, although we know that they certainly are not and were not true followers of Jesus the Christ. But nevertheless, they called themselves Christians. But they found in their heart that it was compatible to be a Christian and a slave master, to be a Christian and a murderer of black people, to be a Christian and to subject a member of the human family to cruel, inhuman, and unjust treatment and conditions. Though Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly, these so-called Christians found it compatible with their system of belief to deprive a whole segment of humanity of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They even found it compatible with their belief of Christianity to keep us ignorant, blind, deaf, and dumb to the knowledge of self and others. They found it completely compatible with the way they perceived Jesus Christ. 
that they should keep us from ever knowing letters, to keep us ignorant, unlearned, that they and their children might be able to use us as tools of service and as slaves. One hundred or more years ago, when Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, they set the so-called American Negro free, but yet not free. They set us free from their hand, but not free from their will, not free from their way. So at that time, our people went to the churches. They did not want us in their churches, and it was completely compatible with their belief in Christ that we should have separate facilities from them. So they worshipped Almighty God in their manner, and they allowed their slave to worship God in their manner. They saw intelligent black men, and they wanted these black men to be teachers of Christianity, but not teachers of the doctrine of Christ that would make us free, independent, self-respecting, loving of self, loving of our brother as ourself, unified. No, they did not want us in that state, but the preacher that they chose to teach us Christianity, they chose that preacher to teach certain doctrines of the teachings of Christ without giving us understanding, doctrines that would make us a better and more willing slave. As you know, these so-called Christians, they worshipped the birthday of Jesus Christ on December the 25th. So every December, the slave had a holiday to partake of the slave master's worship of the Lord Jesus Christ whom the slave master was representing to us as our savior. Now, many of our fathers were suspicious because they recognized the maxim that if a man will not treat you right, how would that man teach you right? So many of our fathers were suspicious of the slave master being so holy so religious on Sunday and so absolutely wicked on Monday. They were suspicious of the slave master telling us about a heaven where we all would be together with our Lord. And yet on earth they wanted no part of their slave. Well, we began to follow Christmas as the slave masters did. We saw them cut a tree down out of the forest and put the tree uh, in their living rooms. We saw them deck their tree with silver tinsel and with little balls. We saw them put wreaths of holly in their windows and on their doors. We saw them hang the mistletoe and we saw them drinking whiskey from early in the morning to late at night. They began to tell us the story of Santa Claus, how this big fat white man would come out of the North Pole on the 24th of December and deliver lovely gifts to the children. Oh, what a lovely time the slave masters had and the poor slave looking at his slave master began to wish to have that same kind of time. Now, today, this day, in the city of Chicago and in the cities of America, every black church has a Christmas tree in it just about. Every black church is red and green, and every black church has some replica 
that if we follow that which did not come from Almighty God and call it true worship of God, then the Almighty and wise God rejects our false worship of Him, no matter how sincere the heart may be, we must not only be sincere, we must be correct. Now, if we are following that which comes to us as revelation from the mouth of God through one of His chosen prophets, representatives, messengers, or apostles, then we know that we are correct. But if we are following something that has been added into the, the divine worship of Almighty God, then we are following something that is contrary to what God has ordained, then our worship of Almighty God cannot, will not be accepted. Today, with the condition of the world as it is, with nations rising up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, with war and rumors of war and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And we see this as the beginning of sorrows. Yet the scripture says that this is just the beginning, but something else is going to come after this. It says, let no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. Here the world is under a worldwide master deceiver who has taken the human family off of the path of Almighty God. And they have set up a false system of worship of the divine supreme being. So here we are, religious people by nature, spiritual people by nature, believers in God by nature. Yet, because of that deep spiritual conviction, we seek a release for this in the houses of worship. And then the houses of worship have scattered the sheep of Almighty God and have taken the people of God off of His divine path following the made-up religion of the wicked who have put Jesus' name on a system of worship that is as alien to Jesus as the devil is to God. <laughs> Beloved brothers and sisters, as I mentioned last week, it is written in the book of John, God is a spirit, and ye that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that this scripture needs to be understood. This is the only place in the Bible where God is referred to as a spirit. All of the other places in the book God is actually shown to the world as a human being, but a supreme being. But what a G, a John is telling the people is that worship must not be form. Worship must not be just ritual. People have to know what they're doing. People must understand their worship of Almighty God. And when you know what you're doing, and when you understand what you're doing, then the form is dissolved and the spirit replaces the form. So you are worshiping God in the spirit of truth. You see? So if you are just going to church and you are supposed to genuflect when the name Jesus is mentioned, that's symbolic. So habit tells us we do that. So we bow our knee or bend our head when the name of Jesus is mentioned. However, what does it mean in your life? To bend your knee or to bow your head is symbolic that every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. Well, if He's Lord and you confess that He is Lord, then He must be Lord of your life, Lord of my life. Then my life, as being a witness of His Lordship over my life, will bear witness that He is the Lord of my life. Therefore, my path, the path that I walk on, the words that I speak, the actions that I take, bear effect 
objective witness that he is Lord of my life. So I don't need to genuflect. I've already bowed to the Almighty God. I don't need to bow my head. I have bowed my will. But if I bend my knee in genuflection, and if I bow my head out of respect for the Lord, then this must be seen in my daily living. The people of Christianity are people of ritual, but not people of substance. For if we were people of substance, then the cities would be full of the true worship of Jesus Christ. The streets would be full of the spirit of Jesus Christ. The capitals of leadership of government would be filled with His Spirit and righteousness would rain down upon the people as water coming down from the mountaintops. But this is not so. Evil and wickedness is the order of the day. So now we must question whether you are worshiping God in spirit or in truth. Now, this so-called Christmas time, where it's a merry Christmas, not a sober Christmas, not a, a Christmas of reflection on the life and work of Jesus that we might get in tune with his life and work. But it's a time of merriment. It's a time of frolicking. It is a time when men and women are loosely carrying themselves totally contrary to the teachings of Jesus. As we mentioned last week and the week before, Christmas came to the world through the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church inaugurated Christmas around the fourth century after Jesus. Not on the authority of the New Testament, not on the authority of the disciples of Jesus, but they mixed pagan teachings in with the teachings of Christianity or the teachings of Christ. So we find that the Roman Catholic Church got Christmas from the early pagan worship. Now, the pagans got their worship of December the 25th from Nimrod. Nimrod, as we mentioned last week, originated the original Babylonian system. Nimrod originated the system of organized competition of man-ruled governments and empires based upon competitive and profit-making economic system. Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. And as you know, the people's language became confused. This was sent upon the wicked because of their rebellion against Almighty God. Nimrod not only built the Tower of Babel, as we mentioned, the original Babylon, ancient Nineveh was built by Nineveh, I mean by Nimrod. All of these cities have a wicked root to them. The scholars recognize that Nimrod is the base of a worldwide apostate religious system. Apostasy means to change, to defect from an original course, to deviate. So what the world is under today is a worldwide religious system of deviation with Jesus' holy name put on that religious system. So now you are calling yourself a Christian, but you are a deviate from the divine law and will of God, but your deviation is sanctified by using Jesus' holy name on your deviation. There has never been a time when God sanctioned homosexuality. There has never been a time when God sanctioned adultery or fornication. There has never been a time that Almighty God sanctioned drunkenness and frivolity and people making their life committed to sport and play. This has never been the way of Almighty God. But in this world's life, you can be a homosexual and be accepted in the church. You can be a homosexual and be the preacher in the church. 
You can be a homosexual and lead the choir in singing praises to Almighty God while your life is a direct contradiction to the words that are coming out of your and my mouths. This is hypocrisy. This is worldwide apostasy giving, given sanction by using Jesus' holy name. The good name of Jesus on your religion does not make it right. Many liars and deceivers come to the people using the name of someone that the people respect. So if the world respects Jesus, what better way to deceive the world than to come in the name of the one whom the world respects? This is the beginning of sorrows, the scripture says. Let no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. <coughs> well, this Nimrod fella, as we told you last week, took his own mother for a wife. And you can't get any more filthy than that. This Nimrod fellow died an untimely death and his mother wife, Semiramis, propagated the evil doctrine of the survival of Nimrod as a spirit being. And she claimed that a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a dead tree stump, which symbolizes the springing forth into new life of the dead Nimrod. So on each anniversary of his birth, she claimed that Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts upon the tree. December the 25th was the birthday of Nimrod not the birthday of Jesus. As I mentioned last week, no one knows the birthday of Jesus. It had to be kept a secret because Herod was planning against the life of Jesus. Therefore, no one knew the time of Jesus' birth but his mother Mary and his father Joseph. These two are the only ones other than Almighty God who knew the exact date of Jesus' birth. So this Christmas, when you have Xmas greetings, I saw a, a uh, placard on the uh, pole as I was coming to the meeting. It says, an Xmas party. <laughs> Xmas. Not Christmas, Xmas. And since we know that X in mathematics stands for the unknown, what the wise are telling you is they don't know when Jesus was born. And they're also saying you don't know who you're really worshiping on December the 25th. Now, if you just check out what you do on December the 25th, it couldn't be any serious respect for a divine man. You'll be drunk, most of you. You'll be partying. You'll be engaging in fornication and adultery and freakish behavior Christmas Day. Will it be a Merry Christmas when you're so drunk or so high off of pills or so rooted in cocaine that you don't know what day it is? Will it be a Merry Christmas when you've spent money that you don't even have buying gifts from the wicked merchants who don't believe in Jesus Christ at all? Christmas time at Carson's Christmas time at McDade's, Christmas time in, in McDonald's, Christmas time with everybody who's got something to sell because they're not selling you Jesus Christ, but they're using Jesus Christ as a cover for their wicked, hot, profit-making idea of getting you to spend money that you don't have so that they weak uh, economic condition of the country might be made better by you throwing away your hard-earned wealth. This is wickedness, brothers and sisters. This is not correct worship of Almighty God. And I don't care how many gifts you give. And I don't care if you see the man from the Salvation Army blowing his trombone saying, Silent Night, and you drop a few quarters in his cup 
and you help the blind man on the corner who says Merry Christmas, your heart may be sincere, but the thing that you are carrying on is contrary to the will of God. Therefore, you get no credit from Almighty God for your wicked deviation in the name of a divine servant of Almighty God. At the same time, that wicked Nimrod is worshipped on December the 25th. The Jews have the Hanukkah celebration. They call it the Festival of Lights. It is their renewal of the message of hope that no matter how far down the Jews would go or get, that there would always be someone who would rise up from among them to cast off the yoke of evil and bring the Jews back to prominence. The wicked king, Antiochus. Antiochus, as I mentioned last week, came to the throne in Israel through deceit, bribery, and flattery. He was not the rightful heir to the throne. According to what we read, the rightful heir to the throne was one named Demetrius. But Antiochus took the throne. He appeared outwardly to be a Jew, but inwardly he was in love with the Greek, Syrian, Roman uh, way of life. He hated the Jewish way. So when he became king, he abolished the reading of Jewish literature. He closed down the Jewish schools. He robbed the Jewish treasury. He slaughtered a pig on the altar, the sacred altar in the Jewish temple. Think over these things. He absolutely made mockery of the way of the Jewish worship of Almighty God. And it was Judas Maccabeus and the Maccabees that rose up to defeat Antiochus and retake the temple at Jerusalem, cleanse it of all its wickedness and cleanse themselves of the way of the Syrians and the Greeks and return once again to the Jewish way of worship of Almighty God. Now these two rebels that are celebrated or talked about at this time, the Jewish rebel Antiochus and the one that is hidden under the name of Christmas, Nimrod. Both of these wicked men have a tie-in to what is going on in the world in 1982 and particularly both of these wicked men have a tie-in to what has happened to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the nation of Islam since his departure from among us. Now, Nimrod means or comes from a Hebrew word. Now, if you open up the Holy Quran, and those of you who don't have a Quran, you have a Bible, you know that Adam rebelled. Nimrod rebelled. Antiochus rebelled. Rebellion against God leads to deviation from God. And at the root of rebellion is disbelief in God. So the Quran says, I have created you. And one of you is a believer and the other of you is a disbeliever. So God is telling us that of the people, there are some who believe in God and there are some who disbelieve. But the worst kind of disbelief is that kind of disbelief that masquerades in the house of belief. That's the worst kind of disbelief for that is outright hypocrisy. When one claims to be something from the lips that one is not in the heart. That is hypocrisy. All right. Now we're going to look at this 
deviation, this rebellion, this <laughs> that you call Christmas, which is deviation, which is rebellion. Cutting a tree down and putting it in your living room is the way of the pagans. As I mentioned last week and the week before, Jeremiah the 10th chapter, you read it, it condemns this heathen practice. Don't do it. The putting of lights in your house, decking a tree with silver and tinsel balls is absolutely heathen or pagan worship of the sun. This is why the reeds are made circular. This is why the balls on your tree are made circular. This is why the people put lights in their windows. They are bringing up a pagan a system of worship where they worship the sun and not the God who created the sun. Now, look into the Quran. In the second chapter, God is making a man. He's making a man to rule. And when he makes this man to rule, he says to the angels, Submit. And all of the angels submitted except one called Iblis. And God asked Iblis in the Quran, What hindered you that you would not submit? And Iblis's answer to God is, I am better than he. I am made of fire while he is made of dust. Now here is the best Noah telling one of his angels to bow down to a man that he, God, made from dust. And the angel is rebelling against God's command. But he don't say, I don't believe in you, God. He just says, when God asks him, what hindered you that you didn't submit when I commanded you? And Iblis said, I am better than he. Meaning, you really don't know what you doing, God. I'm better than the man you are asking me to submit to. Why would you ask me to bow down to somebody whom I am better than? You must not really be God. You must not know what I think you know or thought you knew. Therefore, I'm rebelling against you. So Allah says to the rebel, get out of it. Get out of the garden. Get out of this state of peace. For you in the earth is an abode, a provision, and a time. I'm not going to destroy you now, but I'm going to give you a place to dwell. I'm going to give you a provision, but I'm also going to give you a time to carry out your disbelief, your rebellion. And so Iblis actually uh, says to God, all right, so you didn't give me time, huh? You give me provision, huh? You give me an abode, huh? Well, I'm going to show you that the rest of the people think just like me. I'm going to go to them and I'm going to make them all deviate. You won't find most of them thankful. I'll get them all to go off the path of God. So Allah says to the deviator, go to it. And I will certainly fill hell with you all. Every one that you take and make a deviate, I'll fill hell with him and you. This is God promising Satan. Take all that you know to take down in your false system of worship. But when it is finished, I'm going to fill hell with you all. Now, here you have the mighty Israel, the Jewish people, whom God gave Moses as a great deliverer and emancipator. Moses gave them a divine law, a law that would lift Israel up and make her a great and independent nation. When Moses went out of view. Listen to what Israel did. Allah says to Israel, Enter the gate submissively. Enter the gate submissively. Don't enter the gate of heaven or the gate of Almighty God. Rebellious? Be submissive. Jesus said the same thing. Don't rebuke the children 
For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And except you can become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom. What is he saying? Don't be rebellious against your teacher. Enter the gate submissively and seek forgiveness. Allah says, we will forgive you your wrongs and increase the reward of those who do good to others. But those who were unjust changed the word which had been spoken to them for another saying. So we sent upon the wrongdoers a pestilence from heaven because they transgressed. Now when God delivers a word to you through a prophet or messenger from among the people, that messenger of God is delivering not only a word, but in that word is the will of God. That messenger or prophet is the same as God in that instance. For the messenger or prophet cannot lie. His very brains, his heart is taken over by God. So he only speaks what God commands him. So when you believe in the messenger, you believe in the God. When you reject the messenger, you reject God. Now, why am I saying that? Because when a man from among yourselves comes to you with a word from Almighty God, if you don't have a yardstick by which to measure whether the man is true or false, because he's a man from among yourselves, you may take him lightly. You may say, oh, he ain't from God, and you may begin to disbelieve in him. Or you may follow him for a minute. You may say, I believe in him. And then when he is out of sight, like Israel, you may change his word. Now the Quran teaches you that Allah abrogates or changes one message for another. But only Allah has the right to change one of his messages. Not the people getting tired of the message and changing it. You are not asked to change God's message. You are asked to conform to what God has revealed. And when you get to the place where you want to make God's religion conform to your wicked, filthy ideas, that it's no longer God's religion, no matter whose name is on it, it becomes your deviation in the name of God. So today, the Christian people have deviated from Almighty God. So what you have is not God's will, for they have changed the word of God. Well, the Jews did the same thing. So the scripture says, God sent down upon them a pestilence from heaven. Because they transgressed. They went astray. All right. Now, what is this pestilence from heaven? According to the dictionary, a pestilence is a plague or disease. Or it could be evil that God rains down upon the wicked. If you look at the Christian world, and if you look at the Jewish world, and if you look at the religious world, it appears as though God is bringing something down on the heads of religious leaders and teachers because of their deviation from Almighty God, because of their rebellion. Now, in the seventh chapter of the Holy Quran, called the, the elevated places, we have that same uh, word again, that when the word of God was changed for another saying, Allah brought down a pestilence on the people who transgressed. Okay, in that same seventh chapter of the Quran, Iblis is mentioned again. Iblis, Satan, the devil, all of them are one company because the root of the devil or Satan is a rebel. Now this is the reason the Honorable Elijah Muhammad referred to white people as devils. You got angry with Elijah Muhammad. You thought Elijah Muhammad was teaching you hate. But what Elijah Muhammad was telling you is 
the white man has rebelled against God and his true and righteous way of life. And when you follow the white man, you follow a rebel. So hell is filled up with both you and your rebellious master and teacher. The white man had not made a good person out of you. He educated you. He taught you. He trained you. He ruled you. He governed you. He masters you. But what has he made of you? He has made you nothing. And everywhere the white man rules, he makes the people a rebel against God. And this is why Jesus referred to them in the New Testament as wicked husbandmen. They are a husband, but they're no good. And many of you women know what I'm talking about. When you got a no good husband, that no good husband will lead you to do things that's against what you know is right. But because that's your husband, you follow that wicked guidance and end up in the same sad state of that wicked guide that is over your life. You don't know how to rebel against a wicked guide, but you know how to rebel against a righteous teacher. Now we close this subject. Beloved brothers and sisters, Nimrod broke the civilization of Moses. Why is this important for us to understand? Nimrod broke that civilization for Israel, built on a divine revelation and a divine law from God. Civilization, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, means one having knowledge, wisdom, understanding, culture, refinement, the pursuit of happiness, and is not savage. Now, when a prophet of God comes among a people, he gives them knowledge. He gives them wisdom. And Allah gives them understanding. And when they follow that prophet, they build up a whole society or civilization. Nimrod undermined the civilization of Moses. He spoke against the way of belief of the people under Moses. He spoke against their discipline. He spoke against their law. He spoke against their culture and their custom. So when he caused them to break the law, they fell down into savagery, into wickedness. And poor Jesus, when he came to those Jews who were now under the influence of Nimrod, they loved darkness. They had religious rituals. They were members of the Sanhedrin. They were members of the Sadducees and the scribes and the Pharisees. They knew the law, but they were hypocrites. So Jesus called them whited sepulchers, meaning that they were tombs in which everyone who followed this kind of hypocrisy died spiritually. And they came up in form that looked religious, but they were absolutely contrary to the very spirit of the law and teachings of Almighty God. So it is today. We mention Nimrod and how he broke the civilization of Moses because the Bible and Quran prophesied that God would give us a man like unto Moses. You and I, the black people in America, are a people like Israel. We have come up under a modern Pharaoh. We've been in the house of Pharaoh for 400 years as the Bible tells you Israel was under the ancient Pharaoh. The Caucasian has taught us their way. So somebody has to come and tell us not to steal. Somebody has got to stop us from lying, stop us from committing fornication and adultery, stop us from murder, make us to worship God and set up no partner, no rival. Stop bowing down to statues of stone and pictures and whatnot of graven images, but worship God alone and set up no partner with Him. Stop coveting what your uh, neighbor has. Stop absolutely uh, robbing each other of the honor that you are due for righteous conduct. You have become a wicked people in love with the rebel that taught you, rebellious against God, and you need a man like unto Moses. And the Bible and Quran teach you that God would give you such a man. He would be a stern teacher. He would be a disciplinarian. He would be a man that had no compromise in him with the wicked way of this Western world. 
And that man is called in your Bible, Elijah. And he's called in the Quran, Muhammad. Not the Muhammad of 1400 years ago, but a Muhammad who would be alive with God in the resurrection of the dead or the rising up of the black people of the world. You are the dead. And the Muhammad that would be with you in the resurrection of the dead is the man Elijah Muhammad that was and is in your midst even to this very hour calling you out of the darkness of the white man's rebellion into submission to Almighty God. Now, beloved, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad built a community in the midst of white America. They marveled at what they saw, the most disciplined, organized, moral group of black people in the wilderness of North America. In the midst of white America, they marveled at what they saw, the most disciplined, organized, moral group of black people in the wilderness of North America. We made the world marvel at what God was able to do for us, with us, and through us because of the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad, born in Georgia, with a third grade education, was commanding men of learning and letters and taught us things that we never knew before, opened up the books and made the books live. He taught us into the science of life into the root of God and the root of God's religion. We don't need the scholars of the Islamic world of the East to guide us. We today are being lifted up by Almighty God to guide these rebel scholars into a higher knowledge of civilization. We are not to follow them. We are to follow that one whom Almighty God has lifted up from our midst. But as Nimrod rebelled against Moses and his law and civilization, and as Antiochus rebelled against the Jewish way and tradition, so today the nation of Islam fell because a rebel became the leader of the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam fell because a rebel got into leadership by the means that the scripture and history tells us, by flattery, deceit, bribery, trickery, he got into the leadership. I'm speaking of Imam Warith Dean Muhammad. I'm speaking of a rebel against his own father. I'm speaking of a rebel against God who masquerades in the garment of Islamic righteousness, but in his heart he's a deviate from the very Quran that he say he believes in. I don't need applause, I need your ears. A rebel against Almighty God who began to substitute ritual for substance. And now the people know how to pray. They can read in Arabic, but their hearts are removed from the divine law of Almighty God. So the scriptures of the Bible in the seventh chapter of Daniel talks about the Messiah being cut off. And what we must understand is J. Edgar Hoover knew that the Messiah was to come out from among you because you are the people that God was after to give you a Messiah to save you from the sin of white people that you have adopted by following them in their rebellious way of living. It is you that our Messiah is to be given to. And that's why J. Edgar Hoover was scanning the horizon looking for who would fulfill the description given in the Bible of that messianic figure. And they thought it was Stokely, but Stokely had the spirit, but not the wisdom. They thought it was Malcolm, but Malcolm had the spirit and the wisdom, but he was not the author of the wisdom. He was tied to a teacher. But when Malcolm rebelled against his teacher, he fell down. So the Messiah, the messianic figure, the one that God would give to the black man and woman of America is none other than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Can you prove it, Brother Farrakhan? Yes, we are the proof. Right. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want you to pay good attention in these last few minutes of this broadcast. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man directly from the face of God. You may take it or let it alone. No man could have accomplished in America what Elijah Muhammad accomplished except God was with him. He condemned America for her evil and her wickedness. And he absolutely was fought on all sides by his own people and by white people. But he brought his followers 
through the valley of the shadow of death and he made us successful and powerful in the midst of America though all of our enemies were against us. That man absolutely came to us from Almighty God with a superior word. The Arab, you may not like his word, but before long you are going to bow down to the word that Almighty God revealed to us through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We cannot follow you in your childish interpretation of the Holy Quran, nor can we follow rebellious Jews and Christians. We have been given a guide, and that guide is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And those who change his word for another saying, Look at what you have now for changing the word of Elijah Muhammad. You once were the pride of the nation. Your fine establishments dotting Cottage Grove. Your fine businesses telling the world that you were not only alive spiritually, you were alive economically. And even though we didn't vote, we affected elections because we were organized. And whoever Elijah Muhammad set up with went up. And whoever Muhammad said, no, that's not the right one, he never made it. That man was a power broker in America because he was guided by God. Now, since the nation of Islam changed his word for another saying, turning his wisdom down, calling it foolishness under the deceit of this new leadership, now you have lost everything. And now a pestilence is coming upon you from heaven because you are transgressors. What is the pestilence? You are greatly confused and your confusion is growing greater by the day. It is because you transgressed. What are you saying, Farrakhan? I'm saying that I too was one who transgressed with you. But Almighty God opened my eyes and made me to see the word of Elijah Muhammad, the correctness of it. And the moment I got back, on that word and stood up on that word and corrected my life by that word and stood and called you by that word. Now the nation is coming up again and Elijah Muhammad is not present. He's absent, but a messianic message and a messianic figure is present in your midst calling you to the way of Almighty God. Even though the chief messianic figure is not present, his power is in the word. So those of you who rebel, those of you who love rebellion over submission, I warn you in the name of Allah, enter the gate submissively. And don't say like Iblis, I am better. Because you were not chosen by Elijah Muhammad to deliver this word as I am doing right now. He chose me because he's the best knower of what is in me. He knew me before I knew myself. And if you would be wise, you would enter the gate submissively and stop your rebellion. And we together can put a stop to the fall of our nation and make it rise and make black people rise if we submit and never put the name of God on our foul, filthy worship that is in contrary to his will. Thank you for listening. And may Almighty God, Allah, reward you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that from this day forward, you will never celebrate another Christmas. That you will never go out making yourself drunk and stupid on the day given to the worship of a prophet of Almighty God. That you will recognize that December the 25th is Nimrod's birthday, not the birthday of Jesus Christ. But if you want to celebrate Jesus Christ's birth, then you come into a new birth, a birth of spirit, a birth of wisdom, a birth of righteousness, and then let us carry ourselves in that manner and we will do honor to ourselves and honor to Almighty God. Thank you for listening and may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Minister Louis Farrakhan, thank you Minister Farrakhan. If you would like a copy of the tape that you just heard by Minister Farrakhan, dial on your phones now, 994-5775. Call 994-5775.